You know, if you want to keep your last name you got, then, you know, marry your daddy. What's up, real ones? Welcome back to the Real Relationship Podcast, where we're bringing the real back to relationships. Yes, sir. I'm Asha Steele. And I'm Devin Steele. And we're so excited that you guys are tuning in today with us. Yeah, we got an interesting episode today. <laughs> um, it might ruffle a, a couple of feathers out there, but... You know, I think that this podcast is all about touching on the topics that most people don't want to talk about, right? Yes. Like most people stay away from because they don't want to get canceled. They don't want people to say, you know, crazy things about their platform. But we truly believe that if it's being spoke about in households and it may be causing issues in marriages and relationships, then there has to be a space. There has to be a platform There has to be a community where people feel safe enough to be able to talk about things so that they don't feel like they're going through it alone. And Mm -hmm. we rose our hand. We raised our hand to be that to be that person, to be that platform, because above all else, we don't really care um, (laughs) about being canceled and all that other stuff. We're we're here to really serve people and help people. be able to resolve conflicts and just create the the type of relationship and marriage that they want to have for themselves. Yes. But before we get into that topic, that discussion, um, we have a few announcements. So first things first, you guys, I don't know where the time has gone, but yeah. January is almost over and gone. February is approaching us. Right. And yeah. around here, February is our our month, right. to say the least. We, we love, own that. Yeah. We, real, real relationships. Is putting a stamp on February because we're all about love, real love, spreading the love. And so if you guys know. Making love. <laughs> of course. Uh, to the each pa- other though. You know what? <laughs> 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 Listen, if you guys have been following us for a while, if you haven't, we always do a Valentine's Day giveaway for one lucky couple to have a romantic evening together and be wine and dine, have a gorgeous candlelit dinner and so we're going to do that once again this year choosing a lucky couple to win that evening of romance and so in order for you to get the details of how you can enter to win i want you to go ahead and text hashtag vday vday to 302-231-0338 and you will receive the details to enter to win that romantic evening yeah and make sure y'all put in hashtag yeah vday because with the the love taps, y'all be like just sending love tap. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all ain't even getting what y'all supposed to get when y'all are texting us. So make sure that you are putting that hashtag, whether you're texting V Day or you're texting Love Tap, so that we can make sure you get the information you need. Mm-hmm. Um second announce oh, on top of what Asha just said, like we said, we trying to run February. We trying to make February as ours and stamp that. So not only do we do the Valentine's Day giveaway where we pick a couple to be our Valentine, but we also do a calendar um, where we have different activities throughout the month of February to hope to help boost your emotional intimacy. And of course, you know, your physical intimacy, so intimacy. So me and Asha right now, we're working on that calendar, switching up the activities a little bit, switching up the positions on the days that you're supposed (laughs) to have sex. You know, so we can keep this thing yeah. fresh. So, uh, keep it be spicy. Of, yeah, very spicy, caliente. <laughs> so, just be on the lookout um, for those details because we're gonna have that calendar for you y'all soon. So, yes, look out for that. Uh, the second announcement was, you know, shout out to everybody who did text us hashtag emphasis on hashtag <laughs> love tapped and joined our text community. Um, like we said on last week's episode, we started. Uh, doing this because we wanted to be able to give y'all simple but very impactful information every Friday to really help your relationships. And, you know, since y'all was telling us that y'all missed us so much last year and, like, we are coming strong this year, pause, but we coming (laughs) strong this year, we're trying to find every possible way that we can add value to you and your relationship, even if you're not in a relationship, to help prepare you for the day that you do get into a relationship. So me and Asha were sitting around and we were brainstorming and we was like, you know what? The the point of us starting these love taps was to boost the uh, emotional intimacy in people's relationship, which then leads to 
physical intimacy. Right. So let's give them something on top of that. Let's compound the love taps with something. And we decided to come up with a quickie. Like we want to yeah. give y'all a quickie. I know it, it sounds crazy, but this is what we're going <laughs> to give y'all. So every Friday on top of the love tap, we're going to do an episode that is under five minutes where we're going to really explain, go in depth about the concept that we send with the love tap so that you can really have an understanding and start to practice this in your relationship. So I want y'all to look out for that. Y'all getting us three times a week now. You're going to get us with the episode every Wednesday. You're going to get the love tap text message every Friday. And then you're going to get the quickie every Friday as well. And the reason why we decided to do it less than five minutes is because I can't give y'all more than I actually give Asha. So you know <laughs> those quickies are under five minutes with me and Asha. Y'all, y'all got to get the same thing. I can't I give can't. y'all more effort than I give my wife. You know what? You play entirely too much. <laughs> Don't listen to him, y'all. So before we get into um, our Keeping It Real segment, yeah. y'all. Okay. Oh, it's update time. So I know had that, that pause meant. The it's long update. breath. Okay. So we we had our, our declaration. We told y'all we was going to have y'all join us along our fitness journey this year to keep us consistent and to hold us, you know, accountable for what we're doing, right? Right. And so I'm not going to lie. I had a struggle. I had a weak moment, y'all. I had a weak moment. I wanted to give up. Mm-hmm. I was going to give up. I said, I, you know what? I was like, I'm done. I'm throwing in a towel. I can't do this. Right. Right. And I, I tell y'all why. So when we first started, I came on the first week when I updated y'all, lost my five pounds. I was like, what? It's going to be a breeze. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to lose five pounds every week. I'm going to be to my goal by February 14th. You know? Valentine's Day going to be good. Okay? Mm-hmm. But no. Great. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> Tony the Tiger but out no. here. no. So <laughs> next week comes around. I had a couple cheat meals. How many is like, a couple? Like two. Two? I maybe had two. Okay. Maybe two and a half. But okay. I weigh myself. But I just want y'all to know that Asha's meals are not regular meals. Oh, my God. You ever see her plate on Thanksgiving or on the holiday? This Yo, thing. she got like four plates packed into one. But I just wanted to put that out there. That's true. But I didn't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, damn, it bro. Might have been like- you eat more than me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me. It's crazy. I'm taking a picture next time <laughs> so y'all can see it. So, okay. It wasn't that bad, you guys. It may have been a fry or two. Like something uh, here or there. Two. Okay. It what wasn't. Is a fry to you a whole potato? <laughs> <laughs> what? He got the joke. A fry or two. Okay. 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 So, either way, I ended up losing three pounds that week, right? So, I was yeah. like, oh, this isn't too bad. You know, maybe just cut back on one of the three meals. I'll be good. This way, you guys came around, and I was like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. I lost a pound, okay? It's cricket. <laughs> we need a cricket. Oh, let me clap it. <laughs> I'm going to still clap it up for you. You deserve to clap it up. Because you lost a pound, but you still lost. So I look at that as a positive, whereas you struggled with that. Yeah. But on the bright side, because I actually, it was one night, it was so random. Devin was out. I think he was doing schoolwork. And I was looking at myself in the mirror before, like, I went to go get ready for bed. And I'm like, oh, I'm starting to see a difference. So I had him take a picture, and I noticed the change in my body. And we also are taking our measurements as well. So I could see that I was losing inches. I can see it, like, in the picture. And, of course, when he was taking my measurements. But that scale... That was the problem. Sometimes the scale a lie to you. Like a lot of times people say numbers a lot. N- uh, people lie, but numbers don't. Sometimes numbers do lie. <laughs> then, you yes. know what I mean? Like a lot of times people, um, they get discouraged when they step on the scale and they're not seeing what they expected. Like you said, you lost five pounds the first week and you like, oh man, next week I'm going to lose five pounds. The week after that I'm going to lose five pounds. And then a month I'm going to just lose, what, 20 pounds. Right, four weeks in a month, you know, five pounds a week. There we go. (laughs) 20 pounds. And that's not really how it goes. Like, a lot of times when you're starting a a new diet, first of all, people start off with a lot of motivation. So that first week, they're going ham. Yeah. They're going super hard. They're not messing up on their caloric intake. They're getting their uh, amount of exercise in. Like, they're strict with it. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, people lose motivation. 
over time. Right? And mm-hmm. even though, even still, like, your body gets shocked with you changing your diet so fast. So then it starts to drop. Um, you, you see those numbers change drastically on the scale. You lose a lot of water weight. So you think that you're supposed to get the same results every week. And that's not how how this really goes. Like, it's really like a, a up and down right. roller coaster. Some weeks are going to be good. Some weeks are going to be stagnant. Some weeks um, you're going to gain weight. Like, that's the importance of being able to have multiple measurements, like mm-hmm. taking pictures, taking inches, and then measuring yourself. Because when you're not seeing it on the scale, you may be able to see it in your pictures. When you're not seeing the pictures, you can see it by measuring your inches. So right. um, that that helps out a lot of people who are going on a weight loss journey. And speaking of having some of the weeks that are stagnant, mm-hmm. I had one of those weeks. Really now? I had one of those weeks, but it didn't come from lack of exercise. Or it didn't come from... You know, Thanksgiving meals in the middle of January. <laughs> it came from the simple the fact that I have lost like 15 pounds mm-hmm. already since we started that. And I haven't adjusted my caloric intake. So I'm still eating the same amount of calories, but I weigh less. So my body doesn't need the same amount of calories I was eating before mm-hmm. to, you know, be effective throughout the day or have enough energy throughout the day. Right. So what I got to do is go back and recalibrate the amount of calories that I'm taking in. Because I think before I was like on a 500 to 700 cal- caloric deficit, mm-hmm. which basically means you're eating 500 calories, 700 calories less than your body needs in order to operate efficiently throughout the day. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that going into next week. And, you know, we'll keep you all updated yes. on those uh, results. Yes, you guys. So... Getting into our keeping it real topic. This is what we try to prepare y'all for in the beginning, right? Yeah. So this may, like I said, it may ruffle a lot of feathers, but mm-hmm. we feel like it's something that needs to be talked about. And I and I want to just put out there early on before we even start that this this episode is not even about or this segment is not even about who's right mm-hmm. or what's right because I think we spend so much time trying to prove who's right. Instead of just focusing on what's right for you. So in this segment, we're going to share our opinions. We're going to offer some facts. We're going to just bring up some things that we think is important to discuss before you get married. Or even if you're dealing with these issues right now in the marriage. Um, But let's get into it because I feel like I'm trying to prepare y'all not to be mad at me. But I don't care. All right. Because this needs to be talked about. Okay. But I don't know why we were just thinking about this topic. But... I saw a video on YouTube from Steve Harvey's show um, where uh, a woman and a man were discussing an issue that they were having as they discuss possibly getting married in the future. Mm -hmm. And it was on the topic of should a woman take a man's last name? So um, before we even jump into it, before I play the video for y'all, we posted this video on our Instagram and on TikTok. It was going crazy. Like a, a lot of people had opinions on how it should be, mm-hmm. whether a woman should take it or whether a woman shouldn't. But I want to read for y'all before we play the video a couple of the comment comments that really stuck out to me so y'all can get an understanding of where people mindset is before we even uh, get into it. So one of the comments that had me like dying laughing and she was like, <clears throat> Dear future husband, you will never have this problem with me. I can't wait to drop uh, this name I got. I'm tired of my family anyway. Free me. I'm serious, though. Another one said, isn't that the whole point of the father giving away the bride? Her husband now respectfully takes on the responsibilities and obligations that her father once boasted. It's only right and respectful to change the last name in honor of your husband. Next one says, I wanted to keep my last name to preserve my family lineage. There isn't much of us left, unfortunately. And I come from a female dominated family. I'll hyphenate my name if my partner would accept it. Another one that just blew me away says, whew, I didn't take my husband's last name because deep down inside, I knew it wouldn't last. Mm, 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 mm. So much wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> um, and the last one says, which I saw a lot of this in our comments section, a lot of 
women were saying this. And it said that taking the last name is all about the man's ego. I'll, I have my doctorate. There is no way I'm dropping my name. I went through schooling. He didn't. So as you can see from that, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of um, opinions out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say what's right or wrong, but I'm just going to give my thoughts on some of the, the, the responses that I was seeing from people. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and get into this video so that y'all can hear it for yourself about our future and talk, talks about marriage we've kind of we have a little issue here and there so he's traditional and I'm a modern woman one of the biggest issues we hit was about marriage he thinks that I should take his complete last name I've talked about hyphenating my last name <laughs> he, five, five claps right there. As far as your name getting hyphenated, I understand his position on that <clears throat> because a man feels like that's the ultimate sacrifice of himself is to get married and to take his <clears throat> name. You know, if you want to keep your last name you got, then, you know, marry your daddy. <laughs> that's exactly what he said. That's exactly what he said. Now, now based off of uh, the hand claps, like let's take a consensus of the studio audience. Mm. I heard about five hand claps about hyphenating the last name mm -hmm. and the majority of the audience clapped for Steve. And I know that uh, it ruffled a lot of feathers when Steve said, marry your dad, but you got to understand he's a comedian. Like he doesn't mean exactly what he's saying, yeah. but you can understand the sentiments of what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I have to be honest, like I didn't know too much about the history of last names because another person, and I forgot to read this um, while I was reading the comments, one person was like, I'm not taking a man's last name because the history of it was because it made you their property. Mm -hmm. Like it made the woman less than. And I'm like, what? At first I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. But then I realized that I don't know everything. So let me dig into the history of what last names represent and where they came from. So before we really share our opinions on the topic, let's give y'all a quick history lesson on where last names came from. So it said that in, uh, in medieval England, most people are only known by their first names, right? Which they called their Christian names, which they was given at baptisms. But as the population grew, it became harder to really distinguish who was from who. Like if your name was Robert, there was like a thousand more Roberts all over the place, and we right. really didn't know what Robert we was talking about. So that's when the surname was born, right? And it was based off a of lineage. It was based off a couple of things. It was, first, it was based off a of lineage. It was based off of occupation, or it was based off of your location. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I didn't know, and I want to pull this up, it said that when women were born, their fathers would give them their last name. And then when the women would get married, they would take on their new husband's last name. And one of the reasons why is because it meant that they were covered by, like their last name meant they were covered by whoever their last name belonged to. And women didn't really have any independent legal identity apart from their spouse, right? So they couldn't make any business decision. They couldn't make any legal decisions without having the permission of their spouse. Mm -hmm. And so a lot, of course, a lot of people had problems with this and they tried to find ways to, to overcome this. Right. So they created a new passage of laws, which was the married women's property acts in several States in the 1800s. And under these acts, women gained individual legal status for purposes of signing contracts, engaging in business and commerce and making purchases to acquire a property. So, Things started to change in the 1800s, and some women decided to keep the tradition of taking their husband's last name when they get married, and about 20% of women decided not to do it, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of them were feminists, and they were trying to push for women's rights, which I understand completely, right? Like, I understand it. Now that I know the history, now that I educate myself on it, I don't feel as strongly as I did before where it was like, what, you not taking my last name 
what are you talking about? Right. Like, that sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. Now I have an understanding, okay, of why some women feel so strongly about this mm-hmm. because of its history. But before I, I really dive into it more, I think that there were certain things that really stuck out to that video uh, that the lady said, and one of them was just about being a, a modern woman and him being a traditional man. But before we we jump into that, Asha, can you let us know, for people out there who may not know what the definition of modern woman is or traditional man is or traditional wife, what, what, do, those, what do those mean? Okay, so a brief summary because, of course, I feel like a lot of people define it in many different ways. Right. Um, But just to summarize it, a modern woman is considered a woman who strives for equality in relationships and other aspects of life. They tend to be more focused on their career and education before marriage and children. And they also tend to be more liberal with their uh, points of view. Um, Whereas a traditional woman is considered to strive for the nuclear family, putting most of her focus on raising the family. Um, And she's also considered to have more of a conservative viewpoint. Um, and so I, I feel like when we talk about this, um, and I'm gonna let you touch on what you thought stood out. I feel like it's like just to have our own, well, my own perspective, because I am a woman, the woman of this podcast, I feel like it, I can see a little bit of both, um, nowadays within me as mm-hmm. well, but I would like to know as far as her considering herself, because I feel like so many of us just stamp and categorize ourselves as one thing, put ourselves in a box when in reality we take from all different aspects of life. Right. We're not just made up in one specific way. But I want to know with her just, you know, pretty much putting herself in that box of I'm a modern woman, what exactly stuck out to you that you was kind of concerned about? Uh, basically what you said, because she highlighted the fact that she was modern, he was traditional, as you're going into a marriage to become one, you're highlighting your differences, mm-hmm. which really stuck out to me. And I think you brought up a great point where I don't have to be a modern woman. I don't have to be a traditional woman. I'm a woman. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to let you know what I identify by. Right. Right. Like I don't identify with just everything in this category, but I can take things that I feel like really serves me and it serves my family. Mm-hmm. Because it's interesting because a lot of people say, oh, when I lose my my last name, I'm losing my identity. Well, when you're putting yourself in a box, you're also losing your identity as well. Right. Because you're just being a part of the whole group. Like, you suffering from group think. You don't allow yourself to, to think critically. Like, there are things that traditional women did well. Mm-hmm. And, of course, there are things that they didn't do well. But that's up for you to decide what works for you and what works for your family. But I think that those conversations need to be had early on because what I'm starting to see, and this is my observation of what's going on in society now is they're pitting women and men up against each other. Mm -hmm. Like I understand what's going on, but sometimes I don't get it. Like I understand that when women have been suppressed for so long that they're tired, right? They're tired of being treated like they're not equals. They're tired of being treated like they're not capable of doing some of the stuff that men do. Mm -hmm. They're tired of not getting paid the equal pay for doing the same work. Like, I absolutely get it. But I think some women that are a part of this movement are not trying to show people, look, we're all equals. But they're trying to say, look, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. I don't need you. Like, some women come off very masculine. In that sense, where they're just trying to dominate. Yeah. And again, like, I get it. I understand frustration. But at what point are we going to stop fighting each other and sit down at the table and say, look, this is what we did wrong. Mm -hmm. But this is how we're going to make it right. Like, you don't have to go out here and fight it because we understand what we did wrong. And this is what we're willing to do right because pitting, like, men and women fighting against each other. This ain't helping the family. And the family is the foundation of society. Yeah. I think you said uh, a good point of saying 
when we're fighting and I like like you said, I understand the fight for equality because there's so many things that a lot of women had to go through mm-hmm. to get to where we are now. And so I understand that in certain aspects, but when you're fighting so much to the point where you're fighting to have that equality, it starts to get to a point where it's we're no longer here. I'm not lo- no longer trying to be here. I'm trying to be here. Right. And now, like you said, it's like we're fighting for that dominance. Yeah. So are we now trying to be more dominant or above versus that level of equality that we were seeking to begin with? Right. So I think that's what is just poses the question of understanding what exactly are we trying to get out of it? What are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to be combative with each other and just constantly going up against, like you said, male and female, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I can do this, I can do that? Or are we really trying to say, you know what, I want equal rights? Right. I want to feel like I'm I'm equal in the sense that if I'm, like you said, if I'm working on a job and I'm doing the same position that you are and I'm putting in the same hours, I deserve this. Right. If I'm doing this, I deserve that. So I, I understand the struggle um, for that, but I feel like sometimes lines are definitely blurred. Yeah, yeah, and and like I said, we got to do something to really figure this out because it's hurting a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It's hurting a lot of families, and I know a lot of guys were bringing up, and I agree with this as well. Where it's like you're putting out there so much that you're modern women. But are you expecting a traditional husband? Mm -hmm. Because you can't really have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You can't say that I want to do this, that, and the third. I want to paint a new picture of what it it means to be a wife or to be a woman. But you stay in that box of being a traditional man. Mm -hmm. I want you to pay for everything. I want you to provide everything. You can't have it both ways. So I think that that's a big issue for a lot of men. And then also, I think it's a lot to go with lineage because a lot of women were saying, look, I want to hold on to my dad's last name. But when we are building our new family, we're supposed to leave our old family Mm -hmm. and build something new, build something with our partner. So, like, if you're not willing to take my last name, are the kids not supposed to take my last name as well? Because when I look at it, I look at it as this. When we're becoming a family, we're becoming one. So we're not losing our identity because we both still have our first name, our middle name. Right? So Mm -hmm. we still have our identity. But that last name brings cohesiveness to the family unit. Mm -hmm. Like we're all sharing that last name. Like that last name represents something. It represents us. It doesn't mean that... I have control over you, that you're my property, Mm -hmm. but you're my responsibility. Like the one comment said, I take on that now. Mm -hmm. That's why when I called your dad to ask him, could I marry you? It wasn't say, hey, can I own your daughter? Now it's like, nah, it's respect. As a girl dad, I'm like, I'm doing everything I can to protect and provide for my girls that I want to make sure that when I give my blessing to a man when I hand him over. And I'm not saying like hand him over like my property, but when I give my blessing to a man, I'm basically saying like, yo, I'm trusting you to protect and honor and cherish my daughters because they mean something to me. Right. It's not that I'm passing my property on to anybody because I'm telling you this, if my girls grow up, like let's say that I don't have any sons. Knocking on wood so hard right now. <laughs> Let's just say that I don't have no sons. Like, I'm not going to sit up here and worry about my lineage not being passed on mm-hmm. from my daughters. It's going to be like, yo, that's your family. You know what I mean? I appreciate you thinking like that. But, nah, it's it's about you and your family. Right. Because I don't know how I would feel if you brought that up. And it's crazy to me that we didn't even discuss this because we just felt like what's understood don't even need to be said. And I think a lot of people take that approach, and then when they get to that moment, they like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, I think you brought up a, a great point of uh, asking my father for my hand in marriage. Right. And when we, when I say that because when it comes down to the idea of the modern woman versus the traditional woman, I feel like when I say the lines are blurred with a lot of things, 
we still do some of the things that are tradition. Right. Right. And uh, in that sense, it, it poses the question of how much of the the modern person are we compared to how much of the traditional person of you? That's why I said it's hard to just categorize yourself and put yourself in a box because you do both things. Right. Um. So I just kind of wanted to break it down as far as like with marriage traditions. Right. And so when you get married, of course, we all know, like you just said, you call, you ask for the father's hand in marriage. You have the engagement. You go through all of that with the engagement photos and doing all the grand things. You Once you get to the actual wedding, from all the, the wedding planning traditions, you you have things where it's like traditions that stand out, right? Like mm-hmm. carrying your, your bouquet, uh, wearing your wedding ring. The bride, of course, once you're at the, the altar or wherever you get married at, the bride um, being given away from to her groom, from the father. Um, and, of course which our topic is about taking the last name. Right. Mm -hmm. And so upon doing our research, like you said, we love to do research and give y'all facts of what we're talking about. Most of these traditions, of course, dated back to Roman ancient medieval times and everything like that. And so for example, with the carrying of the bouquet, they used to carry bouquets of herbs to ward off evil spirits. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole idea or concept of carrying a bouquet is. So of course, nowadays, we're not carrying parsley and cilantro, <laughs> cilantro and rosemary <laughs> in our bouquets. We have beautiful bouquets of flowers and just all different types of things, right? So we have kind of shied away of Shifted that sense yeah. of what the carrying the bouquet is. Same thing with the bride being given away, which can't, which dated back to when, in a sense, um, when it was arranged marriage, right? Mm-hmm. And so the hus- the hu- the father of the bride would basically pass off the daughter in a form of ownership Mm -hmm. to the husband. Now, of course, we're talking about the same thing as with the husband now as to why we don't want to give away their names. You still want your your father to walk you down the aisle. My dad walked me down the aisle. Most of us want our, our, our dad or someone there to walk us down the aisle as a significant part of the the wedding to say i'm giving my child to you mm-hmm. right not thinking that oh my father owns me or my mother whoever i choose to walk me down that aisle owns me but rather i'm now giving this blessing this gift that i have to you for you to take care of mm-hmm. it's like a, a sentimental precious right. moment right? right so we don't look at it like that um which goes into the taking the husband's last name and like you went through the definition before how I can understand the sensitivity of where it stemmed from of having to take the husband's last name because it was basically you were giving up that identity in a sense you were covered by your husband and you didn't have rights to do certain things right right? but as we shifted and adapted those same traditions but they changed over time into what we now do with them I, I don't um, I question why is that the tradition that's like, no, I mm. can't do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we won't, well, even when we said this, like, we don't, we're not here to pass judgment or say what is wrong or what is right. What works for you and your spouse is what works for y'all. We, I had seen, and you had brought up as well. And I saw it as well that, um, someone said that they changed their last name, their surname, their middle name and then took the husband name Mm -hmm. so it's so many different ways that you can go about doing it if that's what works for you and your partner but it's just i i question like i said i pose the question of why is it that we as modern women can follow all of these traditions of traditional women when it comes to the marriage but once we get to a certain point it's just like you know what not that yeah because i didn't look at it when i took my husband's last name as oh he owns me Right. right. I know who I am, regardless of if my last name was what it was before or what it is now. I'm still that same person. Right. That's not going to change who Asha is because I know who I am the same way. If I was a doctor, I go through however many years of school. If I change my last name because I'm married to my husband, I know I'm the doctor in that household. Right. He knows I'm the doctor. When I go out to the hospital or wherever I work at, they know to address me as doctor such and such. That doesn't strip me of who I am or my identity. So I looked at it when I took his name as an honor and a blessing to say, 
this is my husband, right? Mm -hmm. We're going before God and making a commitment to become this union, to be become one. And to me, that was me committing myself to my husband to say, we are now one. And so it was an honor what, for me too. Yeah. To, to highlight that, it was an honor for me too to marry her. Because the one thing I didn't agree with what Steve said, right? So I agree with a lot of his sentiments. The one thing I didn't agree with what he said is that a lot of men feel like that's the ultimate sacrifice, mm -hmm. getting married. And for me, I didn't feel like it was the ultimate sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. Because sacrifice, to me, it makes it seem as though you're giving up something you wanted for something else. Right. Whereas, like, there wasn't nothing I was giving up that I wanted more than you. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything that I felt was better than building a life with you. So it wasn't like I was sacrificing something. It wasn't the ultimate sacrifice. Right? Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I, I don't agree with him when he says that. But another thing that you brought up... um. And it really stuck out to me when I read this word, the, the lady was like, taking a last name is more for the man's ego. Like, I got my doctorate. I went to school. Mm -hmm. He didn't go to that. I'm a doctor, so I want to be able to hear doctor such and such. Right. And I'm reading that, and I'm like, what? Like, to me, that sounds more egotistical than you saying it's for the man's ego. Because when I look at it, is it really about respect and acknowledgement when they're caught when you get to hear a doctor, whatever your last name that you've been used to having your whole life? Or is it really about your ego? Mm -hmm. Because I'm pretty sure you became a doctor not to hear somebody call you doctor such and such, but because you wanted to serve people. Right. You wanted to help people. And changing your last name doesn't change the fact that you're a doctor and you can tell you can still help people. Mm -hmm. You can still serve people. So again, I just want to bring things to the light to have people really think about what they're saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that more ego than it is about respect and accomplishments? Mm -hmm. And then this brings another question to me where it's like, I saw a lot of women, they talked about, Success, whether they went to medical school, they became doctors, they've built brands, they've became an author, and they're not willing to let go of that name. So my question is this. Are we getting married too late in life? Should we be taking marriage more seriously early on in our 20s? Because I think we're spending a lot, all of our 20s, building our life, creating the life that we want for ourselves. Some of us are spending some of our 30s to do that. So we're building up these independent lives. We're going to medical school, medical school. We're becoming doctors. We're building businesses. We're becoming authors, whatever. Insert whatever your profession is. So when it's time to come together with another person, it's hard to let go of that independent life we built for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's where the struggle comes in. That's where we feel like we're sacrificing everything we built. We sacrifice, if you went out and bought your own home on your own, we're sacrificing our notoriety. Mm -hmm. So should the question really be, are we waiting to get married too late in life? What is your thoughts on that? I think I think that's a great question. I think it makes a lot of sense because, like you said, we put a lot of emphasis on building ourselves up, being that independent person. That it's kind of hard to strip yourself of that because it's like I worked so hard for this. It's not easy for you to let go of something. If you think out there you built your brand brand or your business up from the ground up, you know how hard it is, right. and so you feel like. Like you said, it's it's a huge sacrifice to just give up. But when you're sitting up there sacrificing together and building those brands together, together, going through medical school and your partner is doing what they're doing and y'all are really in that grind together, you don't look at it as I'm giving up so much for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're on this journey together. And I think that's, I mean, it's ideally it would be great if we could do that. Mm -hmm. But like you said, a lot of a lot of us aren't doing that. Yeah, because now even when I look at it, now we've been in this thing for five years, almost six years. I really see the importance of marriage now. Like, it's not just to say out, out here I'm, I'm spoken for. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? But it's like, yo, you are really building a life together. Mm-hmm. And there's so many benefits of being able to go through life together. Because yes. <laughs> there's a lot of struggles I went through independently that I needed somebody in my corner. Mm-hmm. Right? I needed somebody I could talk to. I was telling uh, my boy the other day, I was like, yo, one of the best things about being married is I have somebody I can literally pillow talk with. And I ain't got to worry about if they about to go run <laughs> tell the whole world. Like, I can share my deepest, darkest secrets and my fears. Mm-hmm. That's not something I was getting when I was out here moving how I was moving. But, like, when you are truly committed to somebody, it's like, it doesn't make life easier. But not having to go through it on your own makes it possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of benefits of doing that. And if I would have been focused early on, if I would have seen marriage growing up or somebody would have told me like, yo, the goal is not to be out here sleeping with as many girls as you can and party all the time. But it's like finding that person. You can say, yo, this is who I want to build with. Mm -hmm. Because I look at what we're building now and it's beautiful. And I wish we would have did it earlier. But, you know, this is just how our life played out. And we're here now. But I, I see. Um. Just how great that this thing can be. And it's just crazy that we were really getting away of that by not sitting down and really getting to understand each other. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, there's a lot of stuff that I understand that I don't get. Like if you want to hold on to your dad's name, you're not going against the patriarchy. Mm-hmm. You're still keeping a man's last name. So I get what you're trying to do, but in a sense, you're still not going against the patriarchy. And then when you give, if if giving your last name to somebody means that you're owning them, you going to let your kids be nameless when they come out the vag? The vag. <laughs> That's what you call it. <laughs> let me be proper because people might already be pissed off the vagina. Yes. Like when they come out, are you just not going to name them because you don't want to put ownership over them? Like yes. I don't really understand. Like I said, no, I understand but I don't get it, but I'm trying to get it. And I'm willing to do more research into it. I'm willing to listen to more women who have that mindset Mm -hmm. to get a deeper understanding, but I'm not there yet. I'm a lot closer than I was before we actually did the research and found out where surnames, what it really represented. Mm -hmm. Like I'm closer now that I have understanding, but I'm not all the way there yet. Well, I think that's the beautiful thing about having an open dialogue is because you get to see other people's perspectives, right? right? Whether it be if you are against taking your husband's name or if you're for it, you get to see the perspective of why someone takes their name, not saying, looking at it in a negative light like, oh, it's ownership. Oh, you want to be owned by him or something like that versus no, I sincerely love this person and I want to build with them. I want, like you said, have that cohesiveness, cohesiveness. And take on your last name and have that that lineage um, with honoring your last name, in a sense. Whereas, like we discussed, someone else could choose that they want to do with what they want to do. And just having that open dialogue, it opens your eyes up to so many different perspectives so that we can talk about it. And ultimately, it's up to y'all and what y'all going to do in y'all household. So That's what we said. It ain't about who's right. It's about what's right for you. Mm -hmm. And if it works out for your relationship, do your thing. Like, I... I'm married already. I ain't got to <laughs> deal with those issues, right? It worked for my household, but what worked for me and my wife won't necessarily work for you and your spouse or your, your future spouse. But we just wanted to make sure that y'all are having these conversations because it was one person that said, I've been married for a year and I still haven't changed my name. And my husband's like, yo, what's going on? Right. Like y'all haven't made, y'all didn't have that conversation. And I get it because me and Asha, we didn't have that conversation either. Again, it's hard. Doing this marriage thing but it's when necessary. you never really had an example. Yeah. You don't know what you should be talking about. You're just experimenting. Mm-hmm. And whatever there's ignorance, you're experimenting. Normally, you're going to fail. Right. Right? That's why you have to be able to learn from other people's failures. We can't continue to experiment with marriage because too many people are involved. Mm-hmm. Too many people get hurt when we don't do it right. And that's the point of us having... This platform, 
because we want to step up and fill that void. If other people are scared to talk about certain topics because they don't want to be perceived a certain way, we want to be that. That's why we call it the Real Relationship Podcast because we're going to always keep it real, whether people like it or not. But we're going to do it in a respectful way where we're not really stepping on nobody. Mm -hmm. But we just sharing our experience. We ain't telling you what's the right thing to do. We're telling you, you need to decide what is the right thing for you. Mm -hmm. And we was going to touch on another topic, but I feel like this is such a heavy topic that needs to be discussed that we need to let people just sit on it. <laughs> let it marinate. <laughs> sit on it. Marinate. We should have called our thing the marinate instead of the quickie. <laughs> but no, I think that we should just let people sit on this topic because I keep going back to this post. We over 500 comments right now. So a lot of people wanted to talk about this, mm -hmm. right? They wanted a, a place to vent. So I don't want the conversation to stop now. I don't want to introduce another topic for this episode, but I want to keep it right here. And I want to hear from y'all like reach out to us. If y'all are part of our text community, text us your thoughts on the subject, go to our Instagram and, and join in on the conversation underneath the post, let your voice be heard so that we can start this dialogue that is necessary in order for us all to grow. Because like I said, I'm not always there right now, but I'm further than I would have been if I didn't actually do the research into why some women feel so strongly about this yeah but i think it, i think it's like you said it's a topic where it's a lot of different points of view and a lot of them make sense it makes sense for you and your family like i said what made sense for us may not make sense for someone else but just having that community where you can have and be comfortable expressing your point of view i feel like a lot of times we have um especially on social media, you have platforms where you don't necessarily feel comfortable sharing what your point of view is for the sake of being canceled or being shamed, just shamed or just, just so many negative things, right? Cursed out. And so we want this to be a platform where you can feel comfortable to share your point of view, whether it is whatever. Goes against the grain and goes with okay, the Okay, whatever it is, we want you to be comfortable to share it and to open that conversation. And so... Hopefully you go to that post, you share your thoughts, whether it be on the post, in our DMs, emails, whatever, so that we can continue to have this discussion and hopefully help anyone else out there who is struggling on what they want to do, what decision they want to make. The The woman who said she is still one year into it, maybe. I'll add this girl. <laughs> hopefully it will allow for you and your husband to have a serious discussion on why it is that you feel the way you feel about it and maybe making some some adjustments, right. understanding why and coming to some type of agreeing so that y'all can be on one accord. Because when you get married, it's a lot that comes into the commitment and sacrifices that you make so that you can make sure that you're, you had that marriage and that longevity. And so hopefully this, this conversation started up a conversation in your household and it could be helpful. Yeah. We ain't got to have a conversation in my house because my wife got my last name, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, guys, we hope you enjoyed this podcast until next time. Keep it real. Yes, sir.